to see the fish use the newly opened habitat so rapidly, I mean, it's, it's inspiring, Gene. You know, you feel like you're seeing something that nobody else gets to see, and that's a great feeling. One of the, the duties I have out here as a fish biologist is uh, conducting what we call snorkel surveys. And we swim around counting fish and identifying the different species of salmon that we have. There were uh, six coho, mm -hmm. six chinook, four micus yoy. We're trying to see how fast these fish and how much of the habitat they recolonize after these dams have been removed. In remote western Washington, on the pristine Elwha River, two massive dams were built in the early 1900s. They supplied power to the nearby town, but had dire consequences for salmon. The Elwha used to have king salmon that reached over 100 pounds. They were enormous fish. When those dams were put in, in the early 1900s, they were constructed without fish ladders. So they didn't have a means of passing fish above the dams. And those dams, because of that, essentially devastated the salmon runs. Thousands of thousands of fish would gather behind those dams, milling back and forth, just jumping and beating their heads against the dams, looking for any way upstream. When a river system like the Elwha is deprived of salmon, the fundamental shape and diversity of the ecosystem really changes. What we see are fewer species, a less diverse set of animals and birds, and we have less productivity. Removing the dams is one way to try and restore these fish runs that are not only important naturally to nature, but of course they're important to the people that use these fish. Removal of the Elwha River dams began in 2011. It's the largest project of its kind in the history of the United States. By 2014, both dams will be gone and fish will have access to their historic habitat. But when dams are removed, it's not only salmon that are set free, it also triggers the release of immense amounts of sediment. For nearly a century, the sediment piled up behind the Elwha dams until there was enough to fill 11 football stadiums. The levels of sediment that we have in the water are really high, and that makes the water really murky and cloudy. And that is not good for salmon. They're, they like to visually see their food to feed for one. But two, for the adults coming back, that can have negative effects on their gills. It can clog them, it can irritate them. Jeff, do you want to grab the end here? Fresh water and salt water mix in the Elwha River estuary. These waters serve as a critical nursery ground for juvenile salmon. Keep it low on your side there, Michelle. A team of scientists from federal and state agencies and the lower Elwha Klallam tribe regularly monitor its health during dam removal. And we go out, uh, see as what fish we're capturing, what size they are, and some of the fish, we actually try to get an idea of what they're feeding on. We're not seeing a heck of a lot in the way of food in their stomachs. So they're having a hard time finding food. We think that's likely due to the fine sediment within the estuary. This is just one of dozens of research projects happening up and down the Elwha River. Maybe put a little, uh, little clove oil so I can measure him without him flopping around. Coho 8279. It has a, a caudal fin clip. The dams impacted more than just the ecosystem. They changed the way of life for the lower Elwha Klallam people. As salmon faded from the river, the tribe lost its main source of food and the lifeblood of its spiritual traditions. We are taking kids from the Elwha tribe, whose land historically this is, and we're taking them to the Elwha River. Yes. Scoot back. Scoot back. Scoot back. Here, it's flying this way. Give it some pull. Pull it Pick up. Pick it up, Pick it up, Gary. It's sinking okay. so low. We got it. So today I brought some I brought some bone artifacts. We're out here teaching them the science and the cultural aspects of what's happening with the dam removal. Well, there was a settlement there. It was called Eenis. According to Clallam legend, Enus. our people were created right here on the Olympic Peninsula in the Elwha River itself. When the dams were put on this river, it was devastating for the Clallam people. It took away their whole source of life. They were their staple food here on the river. The elders have 
talked about before the dams, the salmon are so thick that you could just walk across the backs of them to get to the other side of the river. And maybe someday it'll be like that again. I think it's important that we learn about these things because we don't want Elwa to be forgotten. So I was thinking that we can take that dust. This is a great moment in history for learning about how to restore the world back to the way it should be. <laughs> oh, cool! Around the country, there are nearly 80,000 dams. Thousands of them are obsolete, and about 750 are currently slated for removal. When we study the Elwha, we're going to be able to provide guidance to all of these other dam removal projects that are coming in the near future. This is really the roadmap we're developing for how to recover salmon in watersheds where you're removing dams. We expect in a course of five to 10 years that we should see some really fast depletion of the sediment that is in the system and you will see a stabilization back to kind of those normal levels where we have a clear flowing river again. This is the first time in almost 100 years that we've had salmon move past these dams in the Elwha River. The salmon have an incredible will to survive. Their ability to persist in the face of all these environmental challenges is incredible. The fish will occupy and recolonize that habitat as fast as they can and faster than we often think possible.